a leg ulcer? So a leg ulcer essentially is a wound um, typically on the lower legs. It's a break in the skin, so it's, it's exposed tissue. And these wounds typically um, exudate quite a bit of fluid in the case of a venous leg ulcer. Um, leg ulcers are caused by a variety of different reasons. The most common one is a venous leg ulcer, which is about 70% of the cases of leg ulcers that we see. But there are arterial ulcers where it's an arterial fault and not a venous fault. And then you get diabetic ulcers, um, you get neuropathic ulcers, and then there's um, a group of ulcers like skin cancers, for instance, um, that is much more rarer. So the most important um, a factor in the development of a leg ulcer would be venous leg ulcers. And then how do you treat that venous leg ulcer? So the name basically gives it all away in that you need to treat the venous system. So there's very often a fault within the veins in that vicinity. Uh, studies have shown that in about 70% of cases there's a faulty vein immediately above the venous ulcer. So we can very often using a venous duplex scan identify that faulty vein um, and then treat that. But those patients very often have many leaky valves within the leg that needs to be treated. So we use a variety of different treatment techniques. The backbone uh, is the endovenous radiofrequency ablation where we insert a small uh, wire or catheter into the leg and we uh, burn and seal the vein and thereby closing it off because that is usually just a conduit for blood flow towards the foot where you end up with pooling of blood around the foot and then the subsequent ulcer. And then in the vicinity of the ulcer we have a specific leaky valve called an incompetent perforator vein that's identified as well and that's usually treated by injecting it with a chemical foam. And once that vein is closed, the ulcer then has the opportunity to heal up. And then how do you treat the actual ulcer? So in the, in the initial stages, once we've closed the offending veins off, uh, those ulcers start to dry up. So those ulcers usually exudate a lot of fluid, but once the veins are treated, that fluid leak will stop. And once the fluid leak will, will stop, the granulation tissue or the new tissue growth will take place within the ulcer. So the actual ulcer um, starts to, uh, to become much more shallower. These ulcers usually look like you've taken an, an ice cream scoop and taken a scoop of tissue out of the leg. So that ulcer will, will become more shallow towards the surface and then it'll close from the outside to the inside. There are um, surgeons that would go and do a skin graft at this point. That's also an option to, um, to expedite the process. But it generally remains um, treatment with different dressings and keeping the ulcer covered. It's important to know that you know, any patient with an open wound, that wound always has to be covered with a moist type of dressing. So there needs to be some sort of ointment on the wound and it needs to be covered on all four sides. The old adage of letting it open to get some air or let it dry out is a horrible way of treating any open wound because it just really amplifies the pain and the risk of developing infection in that wound. Well, you're leaving the wound right open to any bacteria getting in, so it's not ideal. Absolutely, yes. And then you have an infected wound to deal with. So as soon as there's an odour to the wound, you know that that wound is infected and it requires different treatment for a, a set period of time just to treat the infection. And then the uh, wound healing can, uh, can carry on after that. And how does one prevent getting a leg ulcer? The most important thing to do is if you have varicose veins and venous reflux. So in venous reflux is when you have those symptoms of restlessness, pain, swelling around the ankles, or if you have existing skin changes in your leg like venous eczema or pigmentation or hardening of the skin, but don't take those symptoms for granted. Have your leg looked at and have it treated. So if there is chronic venous insufficiency already present in your leg, studies have shown that your chances of developing a venous ulcer is somewhere between 5 and 20 percent. So you really don't want to become one of those uh, statistics, you want to have your leg treated well before an ulcer develops because once the ulcer is developed it really becomes a damage control type situation where we just try and get the ulcer healed whereas all of that could easily have been prevented if it was, if it was treated early on. And that ulcer consumes your life and ultimately leaves you with a terrible scar, so it's best to prevent it. Absolutely. Uh, the younger patients that develop these ulcers tend to um, resign from their jobs or lose their job in the end because they're not able to function at work because they can't sit or stand too long. The pain just absolutely uh, overrides anything in their life. The amount of painkillers they need to take, um, the amount of care that goes into that ulcer. It's a very socially negative aspect of your life because um, those ulcers 
tend to have an odour, those patients tend to isolate themselves from uh, the rest of the community. So an extremely difficult condition to treat, not just from an ulcer point of view, but due to all the other problems it causes um, in that patient's life. And spending a great deal of money on wound dressings and... Absolutely, it's one of the most expensive things uh, that you can do is to look after a chronic wound because those wound dressings are incredibly expensive.